This is Ben with Snake on a Stick Medical Videos. Today we'll be talking about a syndrome called HELP syndrome, which is a complication of preeclampsia. HELP syndrome is classified by a triad of three things, with the first being hemolysis. The second, the EL and HELP standing for elevated liver enzymes, specifically ALT and AST. The LP stands for low platelets that you'll see in the mother. Like I said, this is a complication of severe preeclampsia. So what is preeclampsia? It is characterized by hypertension in a pregnant mother with a systolic of greater than 140 or a diastolic greater than 90 and proteinuria. It's gonna be in, seen in mothers with an infant greater than 20 weeks gestation. It's going to be seen in 6% of all pregnancies. Again, this is preeclampsia in general. And you're going to see a greater amount of this in mothers who are pregnant for the first time. So how can we think about this from a fundamental standpoint? So if this is the villus here, and this is the infant's blood here, the villus is surrounded by two different layers called the cytotropoblasts and the syncytiotropoblasts, which actually form the filter for the blood between the or the filter for the nutrients between the mother and the child. In blue, this is the cytotropoblast, and in green, this is the syncytiotropoblast. Again, this little barrier between the mother's and the infant's blood. This is the villus. On the mother's side, you're going to have something called the spiral arteries, which are actually coursing through the endometrium. These two spiral arteries here which are delivering the maternal blood around the villus. So this is mom's blood. The maternal blood is actually gonna exchange with the infant's blood, giving it oxygen and nutrients, with again those two trophoblast layers forming the filter. What can actually happen in preeclampsia is this trophoblast can expand and actually occlude certain spiral arteries, resulting in placental ischemia. Basically, there's something going wrong here with this blood supply. You can also get something called endothelial dysfunction. One way to think about this is to have a concept that might not be completely accurate but can help. So remember P equals QR, or the mean arterial pressure equals the cardiac output times the total peripheral resistance. In pregnancy, the TPR goes down and the cardiac output goes up, so mean arterial pressure is about the same. If you think about things, most organs in the body are actually in parallel. Remember that, in parallel. So say that these are the organs, and say the placenta is just like another organ in parallel. What would happen, say for instance, the placenta got occluded? Now this might not be accurate, but let's just think about this. The TPR will go up, and that's because the TPR is proportional to 1 over the vessels in parallel. So let's do a quick numerical example to think about this. Say 1 over 5, say I have 5 vessels, and that's equal to 0 0.2, so the resistance is 0.2. Now say, say I move down to 4 vessels, the resistance equals 0.25. So you see how the resistance went up. So the TPR will go up. Now let's revisit that, that equation. The NMAP equals cardiac output times TPR. Cardiac output will still be up. TPR, see it's not changed. You have an increase in NMAP, so you're going to get hypertension. That's one way to think about this whole thing. 